Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and we are finally reaching the last two races in the first ever Formula E season. We are going to London for two races, the first double header in Formula E history and this will see out the season. So it's close between Nelson Piquet, Sebastian Buemi and Lucas Degrassi. They are all fighting for the title and for some weird reason, these races are starting under the safety car, which I believe has something to do with turn one. Apparently it was quite dangerous. I'm not 100% sure on that. There was also protesters doing stuff. I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but we will see. I'm pretty sure it's the corner being too dangerous for 20 cars to go around it at speed. Kind of a shame, really, actually. I've been... I mean, I kind of see, I want to see what was wrong with the corner. But we do have a few driver changes to go through for this final round. So this will be the last time we do this. I won't bother doing it in the next video because it's the same as this grid. So we lose Jaime Alguasuari. He is gone. Replacing him at Virgin is Fabio Lima. And Vitantonio Luzzi is gone from Trulli. And we have another Swiss driver in Alex Fontana. Uh, Justin Wilson did not return for Andretti. We got a third Swiss driver with Simona Di Silvestre. There must have been a discount bundle on Swiss drivers for this weekend. Uh, Sakon Yamamoto, for some reason, was hired by Aguri to replace Antonio Felix da Costa, which is the weirdest sentence in the world ever. And Oliver Turvey is making his first starts of many for Nextev China Racing Neo in place of Antonio Garcia. So everyone else in the grid remains the same. And so with that, let's start the final two races in Formula E, starting with round 10. Kilo watts of power in a straight line for five seconds. Well, doesn't have to use it in a straight this line, is, but he. This is a place to use it if you were going to use it. He's going to use it this now. Nelson Piquet attacking Lucas Degrassi. Degrassi covers the inside line. There's going to be a left hand chicane coming up now. Is Piquet going to get through? They touch. Piquet's off. Degrassi holds the position. Piquet has to skip across the runoff. Stephen Lou shakes his head. But, and John Eric Burns gone through. Wow. Burns getting past as well. He's easy on the outside at turn 13. What a move from John Eric Burns if he can pull this one off. And he can. He's got the inside line. PK has to back out of it. Disaster for the championship leader. He went for it. He put himself on the outside. The grassy didn't let him through. And Vern has nothing to lose there. And PK's got a discretion. Better part of Valerie is going to just back off because otherwise he's going to end up at the, the losing end of that. We could see him lining it up. We knew it was coming. Degrassi knew it too. So that means Vern is now up into fourth place. PK drops down to fifth. So we get our first big move of the race. And it's the championship leader, Nelson Piquet, going for... It was a bit of a stretch thinking he could get around the outside of Lucas Degrassi, even with fan boost, which he's used early. It almost ended in tears. And I have to admit, I closed my eyes for a second because I thought a big crash was coming. Which is silly because I knew it wasn't. PK needs to be more careful. Um, I'm saying that knowing he's going to be champion at the end of these two races. But that was very, very close. And John Eric Verne is driving an orange car, which is very, very distracting. Not much else has happened off the start because everyone's a little bit strung out because they're behind the safety car. But that was a pretty good... Um, almost overtake. Vern did a very good job getting past. Tape coming into Sunday. That could give Vern an opportunity as they bounce up towards the Lake Chicanes now, but again, still not quite close enough. Well, I mean, Vern is filling Degrassi's mirrors here, and Degrassi knows he's not a stupid boy. He knows for a fact that Vern is just th th doesn't care. He has nothing to lose, and he's setting him up here for a move. This is a good opportunity for Jean Eric Vern. Looks to the outside just like Nelson Piquet Jr. did, but that'll compromise Degrassi's run in. Can Vern get it on the way out through the long left-hander a rosary gate? This is a great battle between them. I don't think he's quite going to have the face this time around. Face towards the inside line. What goes a through. move. John Eric Vern goes through into third place. Wonderful move from the Frenchman. And he's up into fourth past Degrassi. I was just about to say a bit too far back for a lunge, but apparently not. Great job by John Eric Vern. Wow. You can't overtake on this circuit. Nice move, nice move. The quirk on getting the Brosia. So that's the, the team 
That's uh, the team radio just saying. Roger Griffiths there on the radio. Yeah, good move. Get on with it. Jean Eric Verne with the move of the season. I don't know where he pulled that out of, but take a bow, Mr. Verne. That was fantastic. Whereas, you know, Piquet's in just nice and relaxed. So Jean Eric Verne now is closing in gradually, not gradually, rapidly on Jerome D'Ambrosio in front of him. Just eight tenths of a second behind now in the Andretti car is Jean Eric Verne. Dragon versus Andretti. Penske versus Andretti. And there is uh, Sebastian Buemi leading the way, coming into uh, the lake chicanes. You can see the lake there on the left-hand side as they come down towards the second one and then through the really long left-hander. Quite deceptive, the entry to this chicane because you see there's a break in the wall and the wall fades away. So the, 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 it's actually deceptive where that, that corner is. It's a bit further down the road than you actually think. Then through this long turn 13, what a great corner that is. Breaking for the bus stop here. Buemi is leading the race and also has the most energy of anyone in the top seven. He is really hooked up this week. Nothing is happening in this race. I think part of the problem is there is absolutely nowhere to overtake on this track. It's a cool looking track, but overtaking looks very, very difficult, despite what John Eric Vernon thinks. And also because the safety car strung everyone out at the start. It's We're a third of the way through the race, and so far, I think there's only been like maybe three overtakes, two of which are John Eric Vernon, and Trulli has got past Fontana, probably because he's the team owner and Fontana wants to get paid. But we're at the halfway point. We're on. He'll be coming in on lap 15 of 29. Mm. So, in general, it, it's not like he's pitted really early. Plus, these guys did two laps. They did a, a sighting lap, and the, well, actually one lap. Sorry, they did the sighting lap before the race. Yeah. And, and they used some energy on that. Oh, here's all yeah, the teams true. lining up. Both the most, both next EV team China guys out in the pit lane there. Yeah, Turvey is coming in as well. Now, Piquet's only got 3% left. Where on the circuit is Nelson Piquet? He's just coming into the final chicane. So keep your eyes to the right here, and you'll see Piquet coming into the pits. We follow Buemi as he disappears off. But there, there goes, goes. Piquet yep. into the pits. And uh, so I think he would have got through just about with the right amount of energy remaining. OK, so not much of interest has happened so far still. In fact, the most interesting thing that has happened is that Bruno Senna got attacked by a tree. I'm not kidding, a branch just fell down and he ran over it. And they actually showed a replay of that. Um, what is kind of interesting is that Nelson PK and John Eric Verne have a lot less energy than everyone else, so they've had to pit first. Although Degrassi and some of the other cars around them also pitted at the same time, even though I think they could have gone a lap longer. Uh, Sebastian Buemi and Jerome D'Ambrosio are first and second. I haven't really talked about them, they've had a quiet race, not really any problems. They've got a bit more energy than everyone else, so they have continued. Let's see if the pit stops shake anything up. Oh, and Sakon Yamamoto hasn't crashed yet, so that's good. A little bit fun. Especially that yellow flag coming. Exactly, Oliver Turvey's using his fan boost and he's the man in the middle of this pack here flying into the first corner. I think he used it to defend from the Venturi car that was coming out of the pits alongside him. So, and now he's attacking Daniel App up into the left-hander. Oh, is well a nice placed, place. Turvey. Well, what a great pass there. Well done. Good stuff from Oliver Turvey. He overtakes Daniel App, who he was in front of anyway. So did he have the slow pit stop, Oliver Turvey? Yes, 10 seconds too long, Eesh. Oliver Turvey. So there must have been a problem in there for the Englishman because he's come out of the pits. Yeah. 10 seconds further back from where he was. Oh, what happened? Oh, running wide. Twice. Has he got an issue with the right front? Has he hit the wall? That allows Stefan Sarazan to get past him. He's going to hold the inside line, Daniel App. Sarazan comes across and covers it off. And now the Amlin car attacks to the outside. A bit of contact. Oh. Durant forces his way through. And they both just about make it past. But Daniel App must have picked up a problem because he, he's, he's, he's uh, gesticulating there. That's not happy with not, Salvador Durant. Not going to help things, is it? Great pass by Duran. I mean, yeah. that was right around the outside. Here's Sam Bird. Yep, making his way out of the pits after he took the lead. Lap 17 of 29. Let's see here. Yeah. Everyone else pretty... So, no big changes at the front, but this has been the worst lap of Daniel App's race so far. First, losing out to Oliver Turvey due to a mistake he made. He almost hit the wall at that point. And then, he got overtaken again. And then Salvador Duran forced his way through 
apt was millimeters away from the wall if he didn't hit it that is i'm not 100 percent sure i'm pretty sure he's lucky to survive though and we carry on without instant so far but then this is the moment yeah locked him up yeah look how much under still there's something weird yeah, going on with yeah. the right front of that car no there's 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 no way that app would have made that many mistakes on one no. lap so there's the qualcomm safety car waiting to pick up the leader first safety car we've had uh, since monaco i think we went two races without it in moscow and berlin and there is poor daniel app Okay, so Daniel Lapp did not survive much longer, and it seems like he has a problem, not 100% sure. And Sakon Yamamoto has also retired, and he's parked on the pit exit. And we have a safety car, with only 10 laps left, so we're not going to get much more racing, I don't think. And that could give PK an opportunity now, through the left-hander of Prince Albert. It's not quite wide enough to actually get the drive out. Nelson needs to be careful doing that. If he goes alongside him on the outside, Lucas squeezes him into the wall, it's all over. Yeah. He should now there's a, there was a bad move there to put the car in that position. Easy to set from the commentary group. Look how close fell. And, and Sam Bird is right with Heifel though. Absolutely yeah. with him. PK's using his fan boost now, so he, we're on board with him and he's not quite close enough. So that was an odd decision to move it. Was he looks to the inside coming into the chicane? To Grassi with a last minute defensive swerve. Yeah. PK not quite close enough still. That's it. Now into the next chicane. Degrassi still up. feels the need to go defensive. The question is, was Nelson turning it up or down on the... Uh... He's going to get a good drive out of here, just like we saw Jean-Eric Verne do. He's nose to tail. How brave is he feeling? Coming down into the Millennium chicane. What's PK going to do? Absolutely with his championship rival. Degrassi, the back end gets out. They almost make contact. They both survive. Incredible racing. Great race, the defending though, I mean, what can you do in such a tight circuit with a defending like that? A little tap might be in order. Bruno Senna's been given a drive-through penalty for uh, speeding in the pit lane, a real shame for the Brazilian. He was having a great race up in seventh place, but it's all over for him. Right, so we have five laps left, and it looks like the battle to the end is going to be Degrassi versus PK. PK is trying everything to get past. I'm pretty sure they made contact in that chicane. But at the moment, he is struggling. And I'm wondering if there's going to be more contact. And Nicholas Prost is just behind him, ready to pick up the pieces. So let's see how these last five laps go. Demoralizing. I'll tell you, in fact, I know it's demoralizing. It's going to happen to me. It's never a, never a good feeling. Three laps to go here in London. Sebastian Buemi leads 1.2 seconds clear of Jerome D'Ambrosio. Here's a look at a replay of Sam Bird going for it on Loic Duval. That's coming into the um, Lake Chicanes, and Bird goes through. Good move from the Englishman, and he takes seventh position away. So, a great move by Sam Bird. I feel like we haven't really seen him in his home race. And Sebastian Buemi and Jerome D'Ambrosio still lead. I feel like we haven't seen much of them either. And also, Lucas Degrassi has actually left Nelson Piquet behind and is now challenging Jean-Eric Verne. Two laps left. Side by side at yeah. certain points, and then uh, it all disappeared. And uh, just that one mistake, unless he picked up damage at that first turn or something like that. That's yeah. the only thing I can think of. Very possible. But it's Buemi leading the way. There's the Dragon Racing Look team. Tidy Buemi's keeping it. They see J Penn. He wants this thing over. They want a result today. They want another podium. Final lap, and Jerome D'Ambrosio has 5% more usable. Energy through they come then. Buemi D'Ambrosio, Vern de Grassi. Then look at Sam Bird right up behind Nelson Piquet with a lot more usable energy 20% compared to the 9% of Piquet. So Bird could be on for a fifth place if he can find a move past on this final lap. And you want to talk about somebody with nothing to lose? Yeah, this is Sam. Sam's had a, a season that's flattered to deceive every time and, and had all these things go wrong. This, uh, this could definitely put a smile on his face here if he can get this move. And it's the last thing in the world that Nelson Piquet needs right now. But this is also about to wrap up the championship for Edams as far as the Constructors title is concerned. They're going to take a victory here, which will wrap up the team's title in the first year of Formula E. We're going to crown our first champions here today, but it won't be the driver's champion. Lucas Degrassi is right up behind Jean-Eric Verne now as they come down towards the uh, Lake Chicanes. But Buemi it is, comfortably in control of this race at the moment. 
and he's only got a couple of corners left to go. It's going to bring the title fight right back in, and it's going to close everything up going towards the Formula E finale. Sebastian Buemi comes down towards the final corner at Chelsea Gate. He's about to win his third Formula E race and bring himself right back into the title fight. Buemi crosses the line and wins in London. One more race to go and he is right in the championship fight. Edams win the team title. Further back, Zambrosio second, Verne third. PK just held off Sam Bird at the line uh, by just three tenths of a second. Okay, so that was the end of the race. Sebastian Bremi takes a good win, keeps himself right in that title fight. It was a great drive from Jerome D'Ambrosio too to finish second. And PK in fifth doesn't do his championship hopes any harm either. It's very, very close, especially between PK and Buemi. The race itself was not the most exciting one ever. And again, I think the problem was the track. It's far too narrow. You can't get side by side. So overtaking is very, very tricky and almost treacherous as we saw with PK and Degrassi a couple of times. Uh, but that being said, I think this is the sort of race you can make a very good highlight reel of. A two, three minute video of all the actual action that goes on in this race would actually look pretty good but the whole race itself is there's long chunks of it where nothing is really happening but it does set us up for the sunday the final race in the formula e championship so before you subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss the video tomorrow let's look at the standings before the final round dams have actually won the constructors championship with 221 points well clear of Audi in second. China Racing not too far behind with Dragon and Andretti making up the top five. Nelson Piquet Jr. has a very tight lead over Sebastian Buemi going into the final round. Lucas Degrassi can still win the championship from third place. Jerome D'Ambrosio after that brilliant second place is in fourth with Nicholas Prost clinging on to fifth. Okay, and as I said, the next video is out tomorrow, the final round of the first ever Formula E season. Very, very exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it and all the other good motorsport content that comes out on this channel. Thank you for watching and until tomorrow, have a good one.